Hello, welcome. Um, before we start today's class, which has to do with semantics, we're going to go over the syntax class. I gave you two different exercises and I would like to go over the answers. So come with me and let's check together. Here you see task one, it says classify the following phrases according to the syntactic categories, okay? Number one, under the white sparkling ceiling is a prepositional phrase. Number two, was collecting blueberries is a verb phrase. A wonderful sunny day is a noun phrase. Linguistic terminology is a noun phrase. Had been taking care of me is a verb phrase. During World War II is a prepositional phrase. Phonetics is a noun phrase. Is the study of the sound system for languages is a verb phrase. Whenever we, ah, uh, this one was tricky, isn't it? Well, whenever is an adverbial, it's an adverb, okay? So adverbs are usually not taken into account. Look, for example, you wouldn't say an adverbial phrase. So the second word is we, which is a pronoun. A pronoun is a pronoun. Therefore, we have a noun phrase there. And number 10, would have taken it the wrong way, would be a verb phrase. It starts with, an, with two auxiliaries and then a verb. Clear, if you have questions regarding this, please write to me. We, we have our group, so feel free to ask questions. Let's go to task number two now to check. Task number two says, identify the subject noun phrase of the sentences by using parentheses. Underline the predicate verb phrase, okay? So in number one, the subject in parentheses would be words, okay? We're talking about words. And notice that the subject finishes right before the main verb, in this case, a modal verb and then the main verb, but a verbal, a verb phrase, yes? Number two, word combinations is the subject, word combinations. So where does it finish? It finishes right before the verb phrase, have become. Have is an auxiliary verb, become the main verb. Number three, lexical phrases or language chunks is the verb, is the subject. Where does it finish? Right before the main verb. R is the main verb or the verb phrase. Number four, it, and that's the subject. It finishes right before the main verb, is. Number five, collocations. That's the subject. It finishes right before the main verb, are. And number six, that lonely girl who is sitting opposite the street, that is the subject. What is the main verb? Has just taken. That's the main verb. Okay, auxiliary, adverbial, and verb again. Okay, so as you can see, subjects can be super short like it, or super long like that lonely girl who is sitting opposite the street. Okay, but all of them finish right before the main verb. So that's the trick, okay? I hope you have done well, and if you still have questions, please write to me. Now we're going to today's class, which has to do with semantics. Semantics is the study of meaning, of literal meaning, all right? Although we will study metaphors in semantics, we semantics is the study of literal meaning. That's the focus of semantics. And semanticians are concerned with meaning. Sheldon Cooper understands everything semantically, literally, all right? And because understanding things literally causes many problems, then we need to study semantics. Uh, one of the main topics of semantics is, is ambiguity. Here is your textbook, An Introduction to Language. Look here, An Introduction to Language, 10th edition PDF version, okay? And this is page 179, okay? There are practice exercises on semantics, and this is practice exercise number five. 
Part 1, it says, the following sentences may be lexically or structurally ambiguous, or both provide paraphrases showing that you comprehend all the meanings. Let's start with the concept of ambiguity. First, ambiguity is a sentence or a word or a phrase that has more than one meaning, that can be understood in more than one way. All right? So, uh, it could be lexical when of the many words that make up a sentence, only one word is the ambiguous one. We say that that is a lexical ambiguous sentence. For example, here, I saw him walking by the bank. Here, the word bank is the problematic one because many people understand it differently. Meaning number one says, I saw him and he was walking by the bank of the river, the river bank. Number two, I saw him and he was walking by the financial institution. I saw, I was walking by the bank of the river when I saw him. Okay, so the first two explanations, I saw him and he was walking by the bank of the river. Bank is the conflictive word we say that is lexical ambiguity. Number two, I saw him and he was walking by the financial institution is, again, the word bank is lexically ambiguous then. And then we have, I was walking by the bank of the river when I saw him. Here, the whole thing changes, okay? Uh, and when the whole arrangement of words create the ambiguity and we, you cannot point to a specific word, then that means that it, we're dealing with a structural, structurally ambiguous sentence. Let's look at the other examples. Okay, let me see. Oh, meaning number four, there is a fourth meaning. I was walking by the financial institution when I saw him. Yeah. Okay. Num uh, letter A says, we laughed at the colorful ball. In this case, one is the word that creates the ambiguity. Is it the word laughed? No, because it means ha 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 all the time. Is it colorful? No, because colorful only means colorful. It has only one meaning. What about the word ball? Ball has more than one meaning. Ball is the round thing that you kick when you're playing football, but a ball is also a big party. For example, Cinderella went to a ball. All right, so we don't know if we laughed when we looked at the round thing or we laughed when we were at the event, okay? In this case, we can say that this is a lexical, lexically structural ambiguous sentence. Let me look and for D now. D says, I said I would file it on Thursday. Okay. This could be both. It could be structural or lexical, depending on your explanation. Remember, your task is to explain the ambiguity. The first one, would, uh, if we say that this is a lexically structural ambiguous sentence, then we need to point to a word, and in this case, the word would be file. To file means to put it yes, in a folder and put it somewhere. That means to file. But file also means when you, when you use something, for your fingers, for your nails, okay? That means to file your nails, all right? So in this case, that would be um, lexical. If we treat it as structural, then we can say, for example, that it is ambiguous because we don't know when this person said something. Was it? Thursday when this person said it? Or did the, this person say this sentence on a Sunday, for example? 
on a Sunday, he said, I would file it on Thursday. Yes. Or, he said, I would file it. And it was a Thursday when he said that. In that case, we cannot point to a specific word. It's the whole arrangement of, of words together. And we're facing structural ambiguity. Okay. Should we do one more? Let's do one more. B. B says, he was knocked over by the punch. Okay. This is an example of lexical ambiguity. Why? Because the word punch means two different things. Punch is what you drink uh, at a prom party. You drink the punch. And because it has alcohol, you are knocked over by it. But a punch is also a blow, a hit that you're given by someone, okay? And you're knocked over that, okay? So the word punch creates the lexical ambiguity. Time to work then. You're going to do exercise part, exercise five, parts one and part two. Look at the headlines, okay? This has to do with headlines. Why? do we study headlines in a different exercise? Because headlines, headlines are the ones that appear in newspapers. Yes, the title in a newspaper. They have a characteristic. They don't have articles or prepositions or fancy words. They just write the important words there. Instead of saying, the police has begun a campaign to run down jaywalkers, then they just write like that. Police begin campaign to run down jaywalkers. Notice how they eliminate these important words. All right. One last thing before I leave. Jaywalkers. Maybe you wonder what jaywalkers mean. Yes. Jaywalkers are Paraguayan people. <laughs> jaywalkers are pedestrians that do not cross on the pedestrian crossing line, they cross wherever they feel like. That's a jaywalker. Okay, does it sound familiar? Does it sound far away? <laughs> All right, that's it then. Okay, so you're going to do these two different exercises and we're going to check it the next time we see each other because next class, is it next class already that you, yes, next class, you have your quiz on lesson two yes no your quiz number two on lessons three and four okay see you then goodbye